Hi guys, I'm back and I have some updates for you. So I wanted to, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my health and what's been going on with that. And then I have a few like parenting related things I'm going to share and kind of ask about. Um, and then kind of a random thing I'm going to share towards the end. So uh, first I wanted to tell you where I'm at health wise. I think last time I left off with, I was still having some bleeding a little bit again. I think it was like three weeks ago and um, they had started me on some vitamin K and that was supposed to help uh, clot my blood just a little bit faster in theory. Um, and so it actually went really well and they, within about a week, of, so about two weeks ago, they changed one of the medicines that I'm on. It's called Pulmosal. I think I mentioned it last video, but it basically works through like osmosis because it's basically salt water, but it draws fluid into my lungs to help and help loosen like mucus and stuff. But I guess it can be really irritating to the lungs. And so they're having me dilute that with just water so that the concentration isn't as strong. So it won't pull in as much fluid, if that makes sense. Um, so I've been doing that now for a couple weeks and, um, what I ended up doing was I diluted it for a little while. I didn't have any more bleeding. And so I made the strength a little bit stronger. So less sterile water mixed in and was doing fine. So then I went back to the full strength and had no issues. But then a couple days of do after doing that, I had some bleeding again, just little bits like streaks again about a week ago, which was a bummer, but I haven't had any bleeding since. And so I went back to the half strength of that Pomosal and that seems to have helped so far, like knock on wood, because about a week ago I was saying, yay, I haven't had any bleeding in two weeks. And actually that night I had more bleeding. So let's hope I didn't jinx myself again, <laughs> but so far so good. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to share is that I just had CF clinic yesterday. So that's why I waited to, to do a video because I wanted to see where my lung function was um, and just what they had to say about all of it. Cause I kind of told them, you know, I had had RSV, I had had COVID back to back and they had been tracking a lot of this along the way that I've had bleeding off and on. And so we were all really curious to see where my lung function would be. And it's always, I was super anxious in the weeks leading up to it, knowing that I was going to go find out. Um, and part of that is because like when I had had before Trikafta, <clears throat> excuse me, when I had had like influenza in the past or like I had a big abscess, which is kind of like a big infection in my lungs, um, my lung function would drop like significantly. And a lot of times it wouldn't recover. Like it might get a little bit better with antibiotics and time, but it never would get back to baseline. And so that was kind of my fear with this summer being as <laughs> rough as it was, um, that my lung function would drop significantly. And especially with the bleeding and everything, I was like, my lungs actually feel good, but like I could have had, you know, I could have lost some lung function. So my lung function back in, <clears throat> sorry, my allergies are awful. So my voice is like very gravelly today. My lung function in June was 72% ish. And so initially I'm going to give you what it is today, but it sounds like it's not good, but I'll explain why it's actually really good. So today it was, sorry, not today, but yesterday it was 70%. But they said that they changed the software that they use to do the lung function testing. And so that, that percentage that they, that it kicks out is it takes the, the amount of air I can blow out in one, uh, one second, that volume, and then it puts it into an algorithm mixed with your, I think it's your age, your height, your weight, and then if you're male or female, and then it will give you a percentage and that's what that's what I've been providing to you guys is that percentage. But if you just look at the um, well, let me go back. So with the new software, it changed the algorithm a little bit. So the, the percentage is not the same percentage as it would have been with the old software, even though the value is the same. Did I totally lose you? So what I'm trying to say is back in June, my um, the liters that I blew out, like the straight value of it was 2.55 liters of air in one second. 
and yesterday it was 2.54. So virtually identical. So I was so happy that my lungs did not take a hit. Not, a, you know, not any nominal hit that I could have been from the craziness of what I've been through. So I was super happy. Um, my doctors and everybody seemed very pleased and they said my lungs sounded really good. I had a, um, I had a chest x-ray like a month ago, something like that. And my, you know, chest x-ray looked really good. So basically we're going to kind of keep doing what I'm doing as far as the like diluted pulmosal. And yeah, I, I was like, I couldn't have been more relieved. <laughs> so I got home and I told, you know, Chad the whole thing and I was just so happy for like hours afterwards. And I kept talking about, I'm so happy. I'm so relieved. And it was funny because we kind of talked about the fact that like, if you get like, okay news or good news at CF clinic, like it is like the post CF clinic, like glow for like the rest of the day. It's like all of the relief of not having to worry about that for till the next one, which is in three months. So I got three months to hopefully not stress about that. Um, yeah, so that's basically the update as far as health, which is awesome. Um, on a totally unrelated note, I thought I'd share a few things um, that I'm hoping will be relatable, but I'll, I'm really curious to hear what people have to say. But it's on like the parenting topic, I guess. Um, it's been really, I'm finding myself very challenged by, um, I mean, overstimulation, which I guess is, I feel like that's a new trendy way to say like too much sensory input. And I feel like so many parents can relate to this, but there's been multiple times, I mean, for a long, long time, but especially in the last, I don't know, few weeks, it seems like where Ellie wants something, we're having a conversation or an argument or something. And at the same time, Jackson is crying or yelling or wanting up and wanting down and wanting up or wanting down. And then our dog, Maggie, wants to go inside and wants to go outside. And as soon as she's outside, she barks to come inside. And as soon as she's inside, she barks to go outside. And she, if I'm sitting down, she's jumping up on me wanting to go outside. And it's just so much um, sound and touching and lifting and holding. And, and I just, the other day, just kind of like lost it and started yelling and, and, and I, it's just such a bummer because it's like, that's not, that's not how I want to react. And I really kind of ended up taking some of it out on Ellie. And I later talked to her and I apologized. But like, how do other, how, I want to hear from people, like, how do you guys deal with that? Because I only have two children and a dog. And that is enough sometimes to like, make me go effing crazy. So I truly want to know what people do and how they handle it. Because what I've done like recently is I'll try to go in like, if I can feel all the chaos mount, you know, piling up, I'll go into like a bathroom or a closet and close the door or I'll go outside and close the door as long as like somebody's with Jackson. Just for like a minute to like breathe and that it helps, but it, it's not something I can do very long because then I'm needed again. So yeah, it's just, it's a struggle. And like, I wanna say, I think like I could share all of the awesome, great moments throughout my day and you know, the, the huge things I'm grateful for about my day and about being a mom and all of these things because there's a million things I could share. But I think that's all over social media. You see all the like happy pictures and like smiling kids and like not everybody feels comfortable sharing like the really hard stuff. So I find myself compelled to like share more of that because when I hear that from others, it's helpful to me. Um, so I don't want to, I want to be clear that I, I love my children. I love the fact that I get to stay home with my kids. Like I'm so grateful for that. And I know that not everybody gets to do that. So I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for that. But at the same time, it's a struggle because I feel like I don't get that big of a break from it 
that often. It's like nap time, like now, Jackson's up sleeping, is when I get a little bit of a break and I can either shower or exercise, or maybe exercise and shower, that's a nice day, <laughs> or clean or video and <laughs> do this type of thing, um, or, or relax. But it's kind of like one of those, like pick one. And then you're kind of on duty again until bedtime for the most part. And so I think I just get like touched out and like the noise, the like crazy noise all the time. It just reaches a point where I can't tolerate it. It's, it's, it's such a struggle sometimes. So I truly want to hear how, how you do it. And like those of you that have like three, four and five and plus kids, how do you tolerate the noise and the constant input? Cause that is, it's hard. It's, it's really hard. There are times I put like headphones in. That's honestly very helpful. Um, but I don't want to like drown out my kids if they need me. So like, it's such a, it's such a balance. Um, yeah. The other thing that kind of, I kind of went down a rabbit hole related to the overstimulation thing. So one day, I think it was like a week or two ago, I literally was just over all of the sound and the chaos. And so I sat down and I was like, I just Googled, I was like overstimulated mom. And then I think I put like sensory input or something like that. And what's interesting and kind of unrelated, but maybe related is a bunch of articles popped up with like sensory processing disorders. And I knew what that is, um, probably from nursing school, I guess I had an idea of what that is. And I know that people, um, with like autism tend to struggle with sensory processing issues. And I know that it can be common in like gifted kids and I'm sure there's other like categories, but, um, in reading through it, I kind of suddenly flashed back to my childhood. And I say that because like, for example, I used to lose my mind if I had static in my hair as a kid. And so like we'd get in a car somewhere to, you know, drive somewhere. And if I had static in my hair, I mean, even up to age probably 10, 11 plus, if I had static in my hair, I would immediately like beg my mom to pull over to like a gas station where I could get water to put in my hair to get rid of the static because it was so physically uncomfortable for me to just have static in my hair. And I just always assumed that I'm just like a whiny baby, <laughs> basically. Like it was just something I absolutely could not stand. It was like nails on a chalkboard to me. And like, I think my mom was so confused by it too, but I would truly like, I'd be crying. I'd be like freaking out if I had static in my hair. And then I remembered all these stories about like, my mom said she'd always have to cut all the tags out of my clothes. And that like sweaters, I could hardly, I just couldn't stand wearing sweaters. And to this day, I, there's, there's a, um, I have a dryer sheet in my purse with me pretty much all the time. So if my hair gets static or if my clothes get static on it, I can immediately like get rid of it because dryer sheets like help do that. So, which is just so weird. Um, and like, there's a, there's a sweater that Chad like loves me to wear. And I've tried to wear it like a couple different days. And I literally cannot, I, it drives me insane. It's too itchy. I just cannot tolerate it. Even when I wear something under it, if I can feel it on my wrists or like on my neck, I cannot, it's like too much. I just, I don't know how else to describe it. It's just like not painful, but just so hard to tolerate. And I just kind of always assumed that I'm like just hyper sensitive and like a whiner. <laughs> Truly, I was like, no one else seems to have these problems. So this is just a me thing. Um, and that's, you know, true. And maybe I'm just totally overthinking this whole thing. But I'm like, that's just so, it's bizarre. And I was list, I was reading through what it said for sensory processing disorders, like some examples. And one of them was wind, like outside wind. And I'm like, I truly, it was kind of like light bulb because I never put it together 
but like if it's a very windy day, I'm generally like instantly mad and I don't know why I'm mad, but I'm frustrated and mad. And like, I don't like convertibles because I don't like the wind in my face. And if people like roll down the window when I'm in a car, I normally am like super annoyed, which is so weird. It's better if my hair is back, it's less annoying. But if my hair is like hitting me at all, I do not, I do not like it. Which so I'm just, I'm really just advertising how insane I am. But it's really weird. And I truly just thought I'm always just like a baby about stuff, but like, Maybe I actually have like a diagnosable problem um, and it's probably irrelevant because it doesn't really affect my daily living. Like it, it doesn't really impact me to a point where there's a real problem, but it is an interesting like, huh, maybe I'm, I really am, you know, maybe I have an issue there. Um, not to say that any of that relates to the parenting issue, because I think the overstimulation thing is true for like. I don't know, 99% of parents, but it was just an interesting rabbit hole that was like, huh, maybe I actually do have, you know, a problem there. So I don't know. Um, I, I'd be curious to hear if, if anybody else out there has some sensory processing issues, like how it affects them or if they can relate to anything I said, or if they just think I'm probably overthinking the whole thing. I, you can tell me that too. That's fine. Um, yeah. The only other thing I was going to talk about is um, I think part of the reason I'm not making frequent videos, well, other than that I don't have a ton of free time like I talked about, um, but a lot of it is also because like from a mental health standpoint for me, it's not always great to be like super focused on myself all the time and like myself in general, but also just like my physical health, like evaluating how I'm physically feeling all the time. And like, I have a huge history of like growing up so highly focused on my physical health. And like my mom asked me constantly, like, how are you feeling? How are you doing? How are you feeling? How are you doing? And I totally get why she does that. I would do the same thing if I had a child that had an, Ill you know, an illness like this. Um, but it kind of taught me to be like hyper focused on like my physical being. And it's just not like a healthy place for me to be in constantly. Like little check-ins like this are great, but I don't want to be constantly in this place of evaluating myself all the time. Um, <clears throat> and it's interesting because I was kind of thinking about it. I'm like, I have so much experience on being so hyper focused on my physical self, every single thing I'm feeling at all the time, you know, at all times. And I feel like that translated so much into like my infertility struggle because when you're trying to get pregnant, like you're, you're looking for a sign that's telling you like, Oh, I'm, you know, could I be pregnant? Am I feeling something different than normal? And so you're just constantly like doing a body scan of your entire self. Like what is new? What is different? What is new? What is different? Um, and it just puts you in, I mean, both just from a health standpoint in general and an infertility standpoint, it puts you in this, I'll speak for myself, it puts me in this combo of anxiety and depression, anxiety and depression. And so I really have, I mean, for example, like I used to constantly give Chad like a health update all the time, like early, earlier on in a relationship. And I mean, it continues. To this day, I do it sometimes, but it used to be like way more frequently. And he's like, you know, I don't need you to give me the 24 uh, seven, you know, running tab of what's going on in your body at all times. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, that is weird. So I think it's helped me like realize like, oh yeah, that's not like a good thing. Like giving people important information that really they need to know, that's great, that's helpful. But what I was doing was way more than that. And so I've gotten now to a place where I'm like, I don't want to focus on myself all the time. It puts me in a terrible place. So that was a very long winded way of saying, I don't want to kick out videos about myself crazy frequently, because that's not like a great place to be in mentally for me. So that's kind of all I have, but I so appreciate everybody's, um, comments and support and love and I 
I get a lot out of doing these videos. It's been so helpful um, to feel like I can share tougher things with, with people. So thanks.